From burglars digging massive tunnels to cross-dressing thieves, this is our list of 10 world-famous heists. Stay tuned to find out which treasure might still be out there for the finding. Number 10. The Boston Museum Heist since we were young, most of us have been taught to trust policemen. However, with modern movies and TV shows depicting criminals disguising themselves as the law, many of us can be a little skeptical before we see a badge. Well, now real life has further confirmed the fears of the masses. The Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum of Boston, Massachusetts fell victim to a robbery that looked straight out of a bad action movie. Three men, dressed as local police, use their uniforms to gain access to this artifact housing landmark. Once they'd been allowed inside, the not actually cops rushed the building's guards and subdued them. The criminals then dedicated a full hour to looting, ransacking, and scouting out the museum, free of anyone who might want to try to stop them. By the end of it all, the men made off with half a billion dollars in stolen art, including a Rembrandt, a Degas, and a super rare Vermeer. Always asked to see the badge, I guess. Number 9. The Pink Panthers Anyone who is audacious and confident enough to refer to themselves as the Pink Panther Gang is already bound to be dangerous. Seven members of this criminal organization confirmed that astute observation when they pulled off one of the most insane heists to ever take place in history. How did these ardently evil criminals do it though? Guns? Explosives? Sly antics perhaps? Nope, they pulled off this heist while dressed as women. This gang donned female attire and made their way into one of Paris's most exclusive jewelry stores, Harry Winston's. From there, the burglars herded the staff and customers of the expensive store into a corner and raided the place. Of course, befitting their outfits, the Peak Panthers made off with $85 million worth of women's best friend, diamonds. Maybe they were just looking for that perfect accessory. Number 8. Hatton Garden Jewelry Some men will go through a midlife crisis in their 30s, maybe their 40s, or maybe even their 50s. But by the time they've reached their 60s and beyond, the general consensus is that most men have found themselves and are likely to begin settling down for good. However, this apparently just is not true for some adrenaline junkies and money-loving old folk. In March of 2016, seven old-timers broke into the Hatton Garden Security Deposit Vault and made away with enough money and assets to weigh over 200 pounds and valued over $6 million. The mastermind of the heist was named Brian Reeder, a man who, himself, was 75 years old. He instructed the other men, with whom he worked, as they cut through an elevator shaft's concrete wall and breached the underground strong room that they would eventually loot and plunder. Perhaps most impressively, although the aged criminals were caught and brought to justice, very little of their haul was ever found. Number 7. Lotto Heist Gamble Bankers are supposed to be good with money, right? We must trust them to help us organize our accounts and investments. One would hope they would avoid seeing the lottery as a solid investment route. Of course, one would also hope that they wouldn't rob us blind. Neither of those were true for a man who committed what is now known as the agriculture bank heist. At first, the man stole but a few hundred thousand dollars and invested it into lottery tickets. And very surprisingly, he won big. Unfortunately though, for the luck touched thief, he attempted this again a second and a third time, but ended up losing all of what he'd stolen. Soon after, the man was caught and then executed for his good and then terribly bad luck. A serious lesson here, crime doesn't pay. Number 6. The Irish Assassin Some men live truly interesting lives. Lives full of action, blood, and adrenaline. Perhaps we shouldn't be surprised that these same men end up getting themselves in over their heads. In the year of 1671, an Irish assassin with the surprisingly fitting name of Thomas Blood decided to move away from the occupation of killing people and decided to start stealing from the good folk of Europe instead. What did this experienced criminal attempt to nab first though? Well, the crown jewels of England of course. Working off of a complicated plan that involved a prostitute posing as his fake wife and then touting along a false nephew, Thomas did actually manage to nab his target. However, he didn't make it far and ultimately blundered his way into being dragged before King Charles II of England. 
Well, King Charles must have been in a good mood that day because he was so amused by Blood's insanely theatrical attempt at thievery, he awarded the assassin a small plot of land in Ireland to live out his days, along with a full royal pardon. Number 5. The Landscaping Business The year was 2005, and a group of young thieves were planning a big, big job. They were going to hit Brazil's central bank using a deeply thought out plan. The group started out by renting a building that was only two blocks from their target. They then made sure everyone in town knew they were operating a landscaping business. Because of this, no one questioned when truckloads of dirt began to be shipped out of their rented complex. On August 6th of the same year, the thieves succeeded in their plan. Turns out, the dirt they had been shipping out, you guessed it, was coming from under their building and beneath the Bank of Brazil. The thieves actually managed to dig a tunnel straight into the vault of Brazil's largest bank and make off with the largest sum of stolen money in South America's history. Number 4. Central Bank of Iraq Okay, here's a question for you. What ruler is blatant enough to openly rob their own country? Saddam Hussein, apparently. The American military was moving in on Iraq in force, and the power of the West was quickly closing in on the dictator's regime. The dictator must have been feeling cornered and trapped, though, as he pulled off quite the daring move in an attempt to assumedly finance his escape. Saddam sent his son to the Central Bank of Iraq, carrying with him a note from the country's then ruler. This note ordered the officials presiding over to the bank to relinquish all of the money within it. Fearing for their lives and not knowing what else to do, the bankers did just what they'd been asked, or rather told, to do. Over $1 billion was withdrawn from the Iraqi bank on that day, and most of it is still unaccounted for. This quasi-legal heist was so huge that multiple trucks were required to even transport the large amount of money that was taken. Number 3. For Italy Patriotism can protect people, patriotism can save lives, and patriotism can make us do great things for our neighbors, while urging us to make this world a better place by starting with our own corner of the world. It can also, apparently, make us still literally priceless works of art. In the year 1911, an Italian native by the name of Vincenzo Perugia began working the famous Louvre, home of the even more famous Mona Lisa. After only one month, the aspiring Italian nationalist decided that he understood the movements of the museum guards well enough to do something utterly crazy. He was going to steal the Mona Lisa. Perugia's argument was that the painting belonged in Italy. Understandably, not too many people sided with Perugia's argument, you know, with the world-class levels of larceny involved. Surprisingly though, the man succeeded in stealing the famous painting in what has been described as the crime of the 20th century. Perugia snatched the painting while the museum was undergoing repairs and then hightailed it back to Italy, where he was expecting to be greeted with a hero's welcome. The country-loving thief attempted to donate the painting to Florence's largest gallery, however they quickly turned him in after verifying that the artwork was genuine. Perugia ultimately served time in prison. That said though, his sentence was greatly shortened due to his patriotism being seen as an act worthy of sentence reduction. Number 2. Antwerp Diamond Heist If the theft of the Mona Lisa was the crime of the 20th century, then the Antwerp Diamond Heist is the crime of the 21st century. In the year of 2004, a man named Leonardo Notarbartolo stole over $100 million worth of gold, diamonds, and jewels from the Antwerp Diamond Center. How he pulled off such a heist from this extremely well-guarded and police facility though? Well, he worked the setup of his heist for three consecutive years leading up to it. In order to establish himself as a diamond merchant and earn the trust of the Antwerp Diamond Center, Leonardo moved into the center's neighborhood and posed as a vendor. Once he had the facility's trust though, he robbed it blind. Unfortunately, for the mastermind who dedicated three years of his life to criminal activity, Leonardo was caught, although his entire crew of co-conspirators did manage to escape. Years later, Leonardo revealed to the world that the entire heist was actually a case of insurance fraud, as he had been hired by a diamond merchant to swipe their own goods. Whether this story is true or not is still unconfirmed. What do you think? Number 1. D.B. Cooper It was 1971 one day before Thanksgiving when a man boarded Northwest Airlines Flight 305. He lied about his name to board and called himself Dan Cooper. Cooper was all decked out in black, a dark suit hung over his shoulders and a black tie from around his neck. 
When asked, the passengers of the plane said that D.B. Cooper, as he was mistakenly called by local reporters, looked much like a business executive, but what Cooper was carrying in his briefcase was far from what typical businessmen would be carrying. It was a bomb. Once airborne, this thief opened the briefcase exposing the explosive device to a flight attendant. Threatening to blow up the plane and kill its occupants, Cooper hijacked the plane and kidnapped everyone on board. Cooper allowed the plane to land in its original destination of Seattle, but not before demanding $200,000 in cash, four parachutes, and food for the crew. Cooper got everything he asked for and then released the passengers of the plane, excluding the flight crew. The hijacker then ordered the plane to take off into the slightly stormy sky over Seattle with the remaining crew at the helm. Some 45 minutes after they'd shot into the air, Cooper jumped out of the plane into the sky somewhere north of Portland, Oregon, leaving only two parachutes and his black tie on the plane. Despite military planes and helicopters being scrambled, Cooper was never found. Although $5,000 matching the serial numbers given to DB were discovered a number of years later by a young boy who was digging a fire pit out in the sand. The FBI considered the case cold, and D.B. Cooper was assumed dead, as it was unlikely that he survived the incredible jump from the plane. However, in August of 2017, new evidence was brought to light as amateur detectives located a piece of the parachute strap on the Washington and Oregon border. Maybe all that money is still out there somewhere. What do you think? Tell us about a famous heist that you like in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe so that you can learn more amazing stories. Until next time, 